Hello and welcome. Our topic is conditional statements. We'll show you how to use the conditional branching keywords to create code with branches to handle different cases. All branching code in Gauss starts with the if keyword and ends with the end if keyword. The if keyword operates on a scalar value. Like the logical operators we discussed in our last video, zero indicates false and any non-zero value indicates true. Here we see the simplest case where the if keyword is given an actual scalar. However, if can be given any expression or function which will return a scalar value. Hopefully, the output is what you expected to see. Let's move on to something a little more interesting. We'll simulate a coin flip. We start by creating a random number between 0 and 1 with the function rndu and printing its value. Next, we check to see if it's above 0 0.5 which will cause the program to print heads. If the previous case is false, then the else case will be activated and the code will print tails. Let's run the program a few times to see its output. Our final keyword for conditional statements is else if. Else if allows us to check for and handle more than one possibility. To illustrate this, we have some code to check test scores and print a letter grade. We'll run this a couple of times with different scores to make sure you understand. As we've mentioned, the if keyword needs to be given a scalar value. Let's change our score value to a 2 by 1 vector and rerun the code. If that's not the result you expected to see, let me remind you what we learned in the last video. The standard versions of the logical operators, like greater than or equal, will check whether every element in the matrix meets the condition being tested for. In this case, both elements are not greater than 80 or 90, but both elements are greater than 70. Let's change the comparison to dot greater than equal. As you may remember, the dot operators make element-by-element element comparisons. We'll just change the first case to show you an error. We see that the line with the if statement is causing the error, argument must be scalar. An argument is any input passed to a function or keyword. So the error message is telling us that the if keyword was passed a non-scalar input. Let's go over a couple more errors you might encounter. If we remove the end if statement, Gauss adds a little red squiggly line under the last semicolon. This is Gauss telling you that your program has an error before you run it. If we run the file, we see the full error message, which tells us that Gauss got to the end of the file and still could not find the needed end if statement. One advantage of Gauss is that this error checking is done during the compile phase, a fraction of a second before the program is actually run, while other similar programs would not report the error until that line was run. Gauss will report the error immediately. If you have a long, complicated program, this can save you hours or days of time. Now let's restore the end if and remove the if statement. This time Gauss is telling us that it found the else if statement, but since it had not come across an open if statement, it did not expect to find any intermediate or closing conditional statements, such as else or end if. In this video, you've learned how to use the if, else if, else, and end if keywords to make code with branches to handle different cases. You've also seen some of the errors you might encounter. Next time, we'll show you how to write code with loops. See you then!